Hello everyone, I want to show you the best recording settings on OBS for 1440p at 60 frames per second. So, first things first, we're going to go to our settings tab down in the right hand corner of OBS. This is where everything is going to be changed from. This can also be used if you're doing 1080p, so don't worry if you're using a lower, lower resolution. Now, the theme doesn't really matter too much, but one thing I want to draw your attention to on the general tab is the hide OBS windows from screen capture. So normally I have this checked, but for the purposes of this video, I unchecked it because I'm recording OBS itself. So that's what this controls here. We're going to go into stream options and you can choose your services, etc. But the output is really where things get down to business. So the output mode, we're going to change that from simple to advanced, allowing us to change our stream settings and our recording settings, which is really what this video is about. So I won't go into streaming, but it will be quite similar to this. So I'm going to first select the standard set out, have it record to whatever file folder you like to hold your videos in for recording format. Two big options here is actually more than two, but there's MP4, which can be more compatible and the MKV, which I typically leave mine on MKV since it's going to be recording this throughout. And if OBS happens to crash, you still end up with your video most times. Um, I, I think that works better. Some people use a flash video, but I think MKV or MP4 are kind of the top two picks there. And uh, it's really just up to yourself or preferences. Now, the video encoder also comes down to what you're using for equipment. I'm using a NVIDIA graphics card, so I'm using the NVIDIA NVE NC H264. So I found that works best for my setup. But again, this really just depends on what 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 parts your computer has. So audio the audio encoder is going to be the FFMPEG AAC. There's some other options there, but we're going to stick with that. And audio tracks, just keep it at one. If you're using more audio tracks, that's something a little bit more advanced than this video. But we'll just go with those for options for our beginner uh, recording settings. Coming down here, we can rescale the output, but you can do that in the video tab much easier and better. So we won't mess around with this one here. Now, this is where things get really down to business with the encoder settings. So... The rate control really is dependent on what we're per using for purposes. CQP seems to be the best for when we're doing more recording type content, where CBR seems to be more for streaming. You can do Q CQP for both, though. That seems to be what people prefer. Now, the CQ level is where things get down to business. If we have it at 20, which is the default, this is going to have a little bit lower picture quality but much smaller file size. So this really comes down to what your own kind of what you got for storage and if your needs are you know to go as high as like you can bring this down 18 seems to be the happy medium for me still gives really great quality recordings but doesn't go too crazy off with the file sizes which can be really a limiting factor for some as we go down to 16 or even 14 that's where things get a little bit sharper but i don't think i think 16 at the like highest quality and then maybe 18 to 20 for most users as file sizes do get crazy and i'm <laughs> just it just depends how much recording you're planning on doing if you're doing long recordings of your gameplay like an hour long maybe it go with cq level 20 but if you're doing like 10 minute videos cq level 16 might be better for you for a keyframe interval we're going to set that to two seconds you can also have it just zero for auto it doesn't make a huge difference overall for our preset this is where another big factor comes into play it just depends on what kind of quality we got and how our encoder does so you want to test this part out just to see your own pc specs because i can't guarantee anything's going to work for your pc rig uh, i find that the p5 is kind of the bare minimum that we want to use this is going to give us good quality recordings and it puts a little bit more of a strain on the encoder i use p7 though that's going to give us slower rec slower encoding but much better quality the differences though between p5 and p7 aren't that aren't that huge kind of like the key cq level of 20 versus 16 it really just comes down to your own settings and storage so you can play around with these but i think p7 and 18 is kind of the best for me at 1440p at 60 frames per second the tuning we're going to put that to high quality uh you can change that around but i would leave high quality multi-pass mode this is another thing that if you got if your computer's struggling at quarter resolution i wouldn't put to full but it's just i i keep it with the full resolution two passes profile high look ahead we're going to turn that off it enables the dynamic v frames uh i i don't think it really matters a too too much S the psycho visual tuning we're going to leave on as well gpu zero and max v frames two so that's typically what we're going to keep with for the recording settings uh you can play around as i said with cq level and your preset but 
that seems to be pretty powerful in coding settings. And again, MKV for just, just a fail safe so you don't lose your gameplay. For audio, this kind of depends on what microphone you're using, but 160 usually, um, the 224 for some, but I'll keep it at 160 for myself. And replay buffer, I'm not going to mess around with that for the purposes of this video. Under audio, sampling rate just again depends on what microphone you're using, but 40, 48 kilohertz seems to be roughly the usual for most people. Channel stereo, and this just really comes down. Like I leave my desktop audio on since like, if I'm doing Discord recording, sometimes it's funny just to have the, the audio come from that. But I have my microphone set and all this here, so these are these settings. Into our video settings, this is where we're going to change our output. So I'm using a 1440p monitor, and I just started to record more so in 1440p since YouTube has a better encoder for that type of content. And if you're a huge YouTuber, like if you're PewDiePie watching this, then you don't really have to worry about this. It'll still use the higher encoder on 1080p, but I like to use a 1440p to get the better encoder. It just looks a little bit crisper in my opinion, as some videos just don't have that, that pop that the 1440p can provide. You can also out downscale this to 1080p if you'd like. So you got options there if you want to even use 720p. It's all there. So I typically keep with the common FPS values and use 60 frames per second. Again, depends on your monitor and really what kind of uh, frame rates you want to use for the file sizes. Like 30 frames versus 60 frames, you can kind of assume it's going to be about double in size. Hotkeys, we can really set this up however you see fit, but there's a lot of useful ones here. You can also use something like a stream deck to monitor your different scene changes and things like that. Accessibility and into the advanced, we got different things for our video again with the renderer, we're using the Direct3D11. Color format, we're going to keep it in MV12. I think these are mostly all defaults. Color space is Rec 709, unless you're using an HDR monitor. I would usually just keep this there, Rec 709, and then your SDR uh, light ranges. So how many nits at the brightest and the peak, etc. This, you're usually not going to mess around too, too much with this, unless you know exactly what the HDR values are on your computer. But that really is it for the video there. We have a recording file format, depends how you want it to be formatted in the file name. I like to just keep it as is because I've just got that mentally easy to re recall, like which is which. Um, stream delay you can set if you want, but I just leave it off. Automatically reconnect if you're streaming, that's useful to have on. But this is this video, I guess, is more so for recording settings, but that is it. So pretty straightforward what we're going to be going, what we wanted to set up here. It's mostly through this recording tab and output. So if you need to change any of these settings, it's all just right under here. P7, CQ level 18 works best for me, but what works best for me might not for you. So this is something you definitely want to try out. Maybe record a couple videos at 20, a couple videos at 16, and see if you can really notice the difference versus the file size and see if that quality difference is worth that extra storage on your SSD or hard drive. So that's it. Best recording settings in OB Yes. hope you found this video useful and if you did please hit the subscribe button below even subscribe if you'd like i'll try to make some more helpful guides and let me know what kind of content you want to see next thanks for watching